Okay. Happy isolation, everyone. Got my blue gloves on. We're disinfecting twice a day. And uh, my phone is lent against a pillar at the side of the arena. So we are very much alone, you and I. So I put a post up a few days ago looking for some topics that people wanted to work on. Um, I'm hoping you can all still ride. But um, I thought I'd just go through some basics because a lot of the topics that you guys were asking me for help with kind of all stem right down to the basics. And anybody that knows me or that has lessons with me or knows how I work, I'm very much focused on the quality of the foundations. So the scales of training, I mean, they are so important to have really, really solid. They are your building blocks for everything else. So, you know, people have asked me, how do you improve the contact? Um, quick answer is that it's generally not the contact problem if you've got a bad contact. It's the fact that your horse isn't supple. So if we, if we work on the scale of training, if we work on the basics that number one brick that you must lay down first in order to train your horse is rhythm and then once you have that rhythm the number two brick that you lay down on top of rhythm without losing rhythm is suppleness and if we get those two if we get rhythm and suppleness real good the contact is is something that just happens so the horse actually asks you for contact so Rhythm, supple and contact, I call them the baby three. And I've got Luna here, who is five. Uh, I bought Unbroken not very long ago. So she's been riding about two months now. Um, she's quite sweet, she's a baby. And I'm just gonna talk you through one, two and three. So rhythm, supple, contact, okay? And this is for, you know, any horse at any level, any rider at any level, but I promise you, if you get these first three solid, most of the other problems that you'll have in your training will go away and you can focus on the quality of achieving the more complex exercises. But um, anyway, open to interpretation, but have a look, this is how I work. So the first thing that I've got to have is a rhythm. So without my reins is my horse staying in a rhythm in front of my leg without speeding up and without slowing down. Check. Okay, so what was next? Suppleness. So what is suppleness? It's the horse's ability to become soft and bendy. And I like to think of suppleness almost as uh, as an opportunity to see if your horse is submissive as well to the aids. So if I put my inside leg on, I want my horse to move away from my leg. And in doing so, it bends. And that's basically as simple as I can put it. If you want your horse to be supple, apply your inside leg. If the horse moves away from your leg, it starts to bend. You're then working at suppleness. Some horses are stiffer than others. Must stay in a rhythm, remember? So, simple exercise to improve it. Open the inside rein, see where your horse goes. If your horse falls in like this, keep your inside hand open and work your inside leg until, stay in your rhythm, until the horse steps sideways and then reward and release the pressure. So open rein, step the horse sideways, reward. Open rein, step the horse sideways, reward. Open rein, step the horse sideways. Go on, move over, move over. Good job. Good, well done. So, you'll see there's a nice big curve through the horse's body now. The horse is bending right. Sorry, left. <laughs> I'm dyslexic. So, rhythm and suppleness. So now the horse is listening to the leg and it's bending. Yes, good, correct, super. So what was number three? Contact. So where does my contact live? In my outside rein. So if I ride towards you, I ask my horse to go around my inside leg. She's stepping into my outside rein. So that's one, two, and three. If she steps into my outside rein, 
I've then got to pick it up and keep her balanced. Well, she keeps herself balanced. I don't mind them stretching down away from me when they're babies like this. But now I have an outside rein and I can start to turn the shoulder. So now I'm steering with my outside hand while maintaining a supple bend to the inside. What we do one way, we do the other. Open right rein, right leg on, and bend. Good. Pat. Super. Keep your And she stays in her rhythm. And I open my inside rein and ask her head to turn. And as she starts to turn, I push her away with my leg. And then I take the pressure off and say, good. So she's responding really well to my leg aid. And she's becoming more supple through her body. She's giving me an outside contact. So now I can pick up my outside contact and start to turn the shoulder with it. So you see I'm turning this circle, keeping an inside bend, but turning her outside shoulder. So that's basically the baby three. If I can keep a horse like that nice and soft and relaxed in walk, trot and canter, all I've got to do is remember my dressage test and be accurate and there's not much wrong with it, okay? From there we can start applying number four which is impulsion, okay? Once you have the contact and you have your horse supple and staying in a rhythm, we then start adding impulsion to that frame, asking the horse's hind leg to come under. Lots of downwards transitions, making sure that the rhythm stays as you do your downwards transition. That gives the horses an opportunity to slow the front legs down, to bring the hind legs underneath, and in doing a downwards transition, you're actually creating more forwards impulsion. So then back into trot, and then you develop the half halt. And so starting from a very baby stage, your horse is learning the aids really sweetly and hopefully ends up to be a happy horse. Thank you very much for watching and we'll go further up the scales of training in the next video. Good girl.